Good afternoon and welcome to Pike Creek Farm. My name is Renee and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. Today is uh, Saturday and I try to do some kind of food preservation usually on Saturdays. So today I'm gonna can. I received in my, I get a weekly basket from our local produce farmer down the road a mile and a half and it had a lot of corn and we've been getting a lot of corn for since July. And I have canned some corn and I have froze some corn and we've been eating it every week, corn on the cob fresh, it's wonderful. But I think we're getting corned out from every week. So I'm gonna use some of this week's box to do Mexican corn. It's a recipe from the Ball New Book of Canning and it's one of their one jar vegetables. And they're, they're simple recipes because they're raw packed. So I'm just going to peel this corn and cut it off the cob. I need three cups of corn. I need one cup of finely chopped onions. I have some onions that came in my box and a cup of finely chopped bell pepper. And I'm going to use um, this one that's partially red and green because I think it will add a nice bit of color to it. And you have hot liquid. It can be broth or vegetable chicken or vegetable broth or you could use hot water too and it has salt dried oregano and cumin or ground chipotle and i think i'm going to use cumin because we really enjoy the flavor of cumin my husband isn't such a fan of spicy stuff so i have some smoked jalapeno but i thought i better not use that that's what's on the list today to do mexican corn because we want this fresh taste corn to be processed and not go to waste I just wanted to show you how I do my corn. I know I did a short video on this, but I'm not sure if everyone saw that. But I use a bunt pan. And this is a ceramic one that I have. And I stick the pointy end because this isn't as wide of an opening as like an angel food cake. And just go down with the knife. And all the kernels are then collected in the bump pan. Well, most of them. Some just got shot <gasps> over the edge, but it keeps it nice and steady for me to cut. And I have a bag hooked up here to my drawer, and I just put all the scraps in there. So I want to keep cutting until I have four cups of corn. I need one cup of onion and I'm going to use my chopper because then they'll all be the same size and they'll look real pretty in the jar and it saves me some tears. Is what I'm going for. And that is a cup, if I get it all evened out on the measuring. So I have a big bowl, and everything gets dumped in the bowl. Here's the corn. Here's onions. Then I'm going to do the pepper. I have a pot saucepan on with some water and I just added some chicken bouillon to it, the powdered nor bouillon. So I'm not going to add any salt when I mix up all the spices because the broth will have some salt in it. I don't want them to end up being overly salty. So on to the pepper now. The recipe calls for oregano, and I'm not sure about putting oregano in it because I don't have Mexican oregano. It doesn't call for that, but that seems to be what would be the preferred kind of oregano. But two teaspoons of cumin. I'm going to start with one and stir it up. I don't want this to be overwhelmingly 
spiced because if I am using it in chili I can add more and dried spices don't impact the safeness of canning so you can adjust your dried spices you can leave out something you don't like you can add something else what I'm going to add is some ground coriander I'm going to do just shy of a teaspoon of that I'm going to add a teaspoon of parsley Now what I'm deciding is if I want to go for a full second teaspoon like the recipe called for of the cumin or just a partial one. We can start filling now. Do we go up to one inch? These jars are warm and the broth will be warm. My goal this year was to add more straight vegetables onto my pantry shelf. I had lots of meat, I had relishes, I had jams, I had pickles, um, but not as many vegetables. So this past year I've added on corn and carrots and green beans and potatoes, um, coleslaw. My measurement is one inch, which is right here. And I'll show you here, the one inch goes down below this rim. Let me get the broth and we will fill up the jars. And then to bubble and put the lids on. So I'm using water that I added chicken bouillon to. Vanilla chicken bouillon. And get a spoon. Taste. And it's not overly strong. I didn't make it like real heavy. But it does have some salt to it. So I decided I was going to not add the salt the recipe called for, which was two teaspoons. So an inch. You definitely want to debubble this because there can be air pockets. And measure. And it hits right at the one inch. It's the top of the broth and the vegetables. Clean that rim. Put a lid on. My pressure canner is has three quarts of water. That's the directions for my presto. So it is, and I have the tray on the bottom, and I have it on a low simmer so that it's not ice cold water or boiling hot water. You can use vegetable broth with this or just water. You can use homemade broth. Good. I have all four jars in there. So now I put my lid on, but I do my safety check and make sure that this little vent pipe is not plugged at all 
that I can blow through it, that I can see through it. Nothing is plugging it. I check my seal and make sure that it's pliable. Every once in a while I add some vegetable oil onto it. And I always have a spare, just in case. I make sure the lock isn't stuck. And make sure the emergency valve here is in place and not cracked or anything. So this is all good. That's what I do for my Presto canner. The next phase is to turn the heat up until there is a strong stream of steam coming out of here, like, like a freight train steady stream and then I set my timer for 10 minutes so that all the air can evacuate out and then I put the lock the weight on there and then the pressure will start to build up and once it comes to pressure according to the chart here for pints it's 55 minutes and my weight here is 10 minute 10 pounds not 10 minutes 10 pounds so then, once it comes to pressure, I set the weight, set the timer for 55 minutes. This has been going for almost 55 minutes. We're on the last minute, and then I will shut off the heat. Pressure is at zero. The lock is down. There's no noise, so I am going to remove that. There was no whoosh or any sound, so that's a good thing. And I'm going to wait five more minutes before I take this lid off. Here they are out. They're not all boiling. Usually they're boiling more. Ah, oh, there is some there. I just leave these now until tomorrow and then I will take the rings off and clean them and label them. And the floating vegetables will settle down. Thank you for coming along today as I did Mexican corn from the Ball New Book of Canning. My name is Renee, and I truly appreciate you stopping by today. Push the like button if you like this video, and subscribe to my channel to see more videos on canning and baking and cooking and vintage recipes. And I'll show you when I use this in some chili or something. See you next time at Pike Creek Farm.